Well, lasted longer than my than my black review. That went for four minutes. But that's besides the point. Anyway, the main transformation items that most of that most of the riders use throughout the show are known as the Pro Rise Keys. And there are a few different types. The regular Pro Rise Keys all have all are based on animals and have different abilities, like jump, shooting, dash, etc. Rush, etc. Next are the Human Gear Pro Rise Keys. Now, while these can't be used for transformations, instead, these can't be used for transformations. Instead, they hold human gear data, and when placed upon any human gear, because te because technically the human gear data is not inside their body, and I realize how dirty that sound, and I realize that sounded kind of dirty. When when human when when a human gear pro rise key is scanned onto is scanned onto a blah, it's scanned onto a human gear, that human gear takes the appearance and personality of the data. Next are Setsumetsu Pro Rise keys. Now Setsumetsu Pro Rise keys are used by the main are used by one of the main enemy groups, Metsubojinrai.net. And that is a mouthful to say. I'm surprised I could even say it correctly there. But anyway, Setsumetsu Rise keys while still being based on animals, are based on mostly spiders, insects, or pre usually based on predators or extinct animals. My personal favorite is the Dodo Pro Rise Key. Yes, seriously. In any case, there are also special types of Pro Rise Keys. Once I can show you, because one, I will never be able to find the images, and we just be here all day then. So, in any case, let's go into Aruto Hinnon himself. And his main transformation, his main transformation item. The Zero One. Hang on. There we go. The Zero One Driver. Now, to activate this, Aruto has to press button on top of the Pro Grisky. The Pro Grisky will then say its ability, and then he has to scan it on that circle, on that circle like port portion of the zero one driver. The driver will, will then say authorize and they'll be able to open the pro Rise key. Then a t then depending on what you're looking and then when and this is just for the hidden driver and this is mostly for the hidden driver a giant a giant and a giant cyber silver or cyber like version of an animal will appear. It'll then surround Aruto and transform him. They all have these cool transformation jingles, which I like very much. Now, he does get a new belt, but I'll get into that a little bit. First, we have to go into his main form. This is Zero One Rising Hopper. And for those of you who don't know, continuing with the trend of new era riders, Arto is based on a grasshopper. Like the first rider ever, like the first common rider ever to exist, Common Rider Ichigo. Now, this is Zero One's most balanced form, allowing him, f allowing him to, allow him to jump for a greater running speed, jumping height, and combat power. Now, I could go over all the mechanics, but there is a lot. But anyway, anyway, er, anyway, to initiate his finisher. Arto hits the pro Rise key once it's slotted into the hits hits the pro Rise key in the driver. This will announce the first half of the of the pro Rise key for Rising Hopper, obviously obviously being the Rising Hopper pro Rise key, and then it will say impact. And by scan and by scanning pro Rise keys. By scanning pro rise keys multiple times on the circle portion again, Aruto can increase his finisher. Depending on how many times he scans it, the more powerful the finisher becomes. But for the life of me, I can't remember how it goes. I think the last one is Giga. Which makes sense. Anyway, anyway, Aruto's motorcycle also is also the hidden rise phone. 
Because when you think inconspicuous, you think a bike that can turn a motorcycle. Well, more or less. It actually summons a giant motorcycle. It actually summons a giant motorcycle from Ze from the Zaya satellite, while while the toy line it actually transforms. And that becomes the Rise Hopper. Get it? But I digress. Anyway, in this form, our toe gains has the for some writers, they gain R-Tech weapons. R-Tech weapons are basically like suitcases that transform into weapons. R-Tos is the R-Tech caliber, which, which, since he is the main writer, he gets the sword. I miss, I miss writer sword guns. <sighs> but that's currently, I miss main writers when they get the sword gun combo weapon. But that's currently neither here nor there. Anyway, by in by inserting the pro but in any case, for its finisher, Art Arto is able to close back the cal the the caliber from blade from blade mode back into Artec mode, aka the suitcase form. That allows him to that allows him to then by switching back and pulling the trigger, he can form the Cabana Slash. Which allows him to perform powerful energy slash attack. There's also another version. By insert by inserting a, a closed progress key in a slot near the bottom of the hill for the Arte Caliber and going through the same motions that he does for the Kanban slash, he can perform the combat dy dynamic. Which, which the energy slash will then be empowered by the progress key. By using the rock. Now, there are a lot of these, so I'm going to try my best here. So, so, firstly, by using his rising hopper progress key, he can f use the rising combo strash. You know, I'm reading that right. It is does say strash. Mm. A yellow. Which emits yellow when yellow energy is emitted from the Arctic caliber before zero one delivers two powerful slashes, a downward slash followed by a horizontal one. Next is the binding keybot slash, which uses the binding shark progress key, which is another form that I'll get in which a lot of these have forms that I'll get into after this. Anyway, this this changes that this changes the energy energy blood. This covers the this produces teal or light blue colored energy, and a series series of energy sh of sh energy sh of energy slashes that take the form of shark shark fins that launch at the enemy before a zero one performs a close range slash. Next is the oh that's a movie exclusive one. Not going there. Next is the shooting combo strash, which is actually used by another writer, common writer Vulcan. I'll get into him next time. By imp inserting the shooting wolf progress key, which is common writer Vulcan's main transformation item, main pro main tra main form progress attack. What the common writer Vulcan uses to uses to create his main form. He swings the art. Vulcan swings the art tech caliber and creates two blue energy constructs of wolf heads that attach to the enemy's limb and crash into a nearby surface, followed by the energy heads transforming into pins, securing the target in place. Mm, a lot of p words. I'm spitting. Vulcan then jumps into the air and spins like a blast saw de before delivering a downward slash to the enemy as he falls to the ground. That was a mouthful. Next is the flaming Kanban dynamite. Yeah. I actually should have mentioned this. The slash... Arto can actually use the slash version by just pulling the trigger with the progress key. The dynamic, as I'm just now learning like you guys, 
usually happens after he closes closes the blade to Artec mode. That's my bad. Anyway, by using the Flaming Tiger Progress key, Zero One delivers two large flaming slashes. Next is the Metal Rising Combat Dynamic. By using the Rising Hopper Progress key, I'll get into that a little bit, Zero One delivers two large spiky metal slashes to any enemy in sight. But now that we got that, now we got that main one out of the way, whew, let's move on into his next form. This is Biting Shark. And yeah, these forms work a little dif differently. Instead of fully changing the armor, like, or instead of fully changing the suit, suit or gaining armor, Zero One's forms actually work by his, but he, he keeps the main suit suit while some of the body parts for it's split off into new areas and new armor covers the open areas. In this case, I think parts of his faceplate become fin-like arm blades. But that could just be me. Also, side note, there are actually a lot of forms that didn't make it in show because there are a lot of progress keys. So, I'm not going over every single one. Otherwise, we'd be here all day. Also, I'm not going over movie exclusive forms. Oh. Actually, you know what? I should. I really should. But in any case, this form is access is accessed by the progress key, one of the progress keys I mentioned before. That being the biting shark progress key. This allows zero one for that allow him to move faster. Fast, allow, well, this form is specialized for fighting in environments that have, that have water, sorry guys, and can be, and allow him for, and allow him for more water resistance, and, uh, I mean, minimizing water resistance, sometimes it's just hard to describe these. Anyway, biting sh But as a downside, if you use, if biting shark is on land, his combat abilities are ser are diminished. Also, Zero One's punching and kicking power are also slightly increased. This form is equipped with suit weapon unlimited chopper, which are two or which are the two or two green yellowish arm blades that are on Zero One's arms. And that work like mini blades that can cut through pretty much anything. Now his fin now his finisher in this form is the Binding Impact, and I don't think I actually went over Rising Impact. I'm sorry, guys. Let me. Okay, before we get into shot, before we get into Binding Impact, let's get into right. Let's get into Rising Impact. Zero One runs at an enemy and launches it up into the air via a kick. Poor performing two powerful rider kicks, one to thrust the enemy back downwards, and one to destroy it. Now back to Binding Impact. Zero One repeatedly slashes the enemy with, with shark fins on his arms and legs, producing Chetcher's yellow and teal crescent, teal, teal crescents in the process, before sending them sky high, Protecting several teal energy shark fins fr from his arms, slashing the enemy with them, and then, like most, and then, like most finishing moves, it blows up. Anyway, this is Zero One's next form, Flying Falcon, which uses the, you guessed it, Flying Falcon Progress Key. In this form, now this form, well, this form decreases Zero One's kicking power and jumping. <laughs> height, as well as a de slight decrease in running speed, but his, but however, he does get a in slight increase in punching power. Also being based on a falcon, Flying Falcon gives Zero One the ability to fly. Unfortunately, he temporarily lost access to his form by, by his progress key being stolen by an enemy rider. He did get it back, however. 
Anyway, this move's finisher is the f is of course titled Flying Impact. Zero One sprouts a pair of mechanical falcon wings from his back and flies towards the target before grabbing them with his legs, like birds of prey do, and fl lifting and lifting them into the air. He then throws the enemy and delivers a rider kick covered in magenta energy. His next form is Flaming Tiger, which uses, you guessed it, the Flaming Tiger Progress Key. Now, I should have seen if he was equipped with a- oh, went too far. I should probably see if he was equipped with a weapon in Flying Falcon form. Excuse me, guys. Let me look real quick. Uh, nope. Okay, anyway. Now, Flaming Tiger gains Grand Zero 1 increase in punching, punching power, jumping hat, and running speed. But it's still less than Rising Hopper's kicking and jumping height. Now... Now, in this form, he's equipped with a Panthera Burner, which allow which grants Zero One the ability to produce fire. And if you guys have ever seen Avatar before, that means he's now a Firebender. Shout out to those of you who got that reference. But anyway, let's get into his finisher, which is the Flaming Impact, where Zero One projects a ring of fire before charging through them and delivering powerful slashes at his enemy with his tiger gauntlets, which are basically red gloves. Next is the fr is Freezing Bear, which uses the Freezing Bear progress key. Why don't they just call it Frozen Polar Bear? And that sounds like a bit of a mouthful now that I say it out loud. In any case, zero- anyway, all Zero One's other abilities decrease, but he does gain but he does gain an increase in punching power. Obviously. Wait, why didn't they go with a dog like him? Oh no, wait, Vulcan's already got the dog thing thing already's got the dog thing. But so did Ah, forget it. Anyway, this one is Anyway, in this form, he's equipped with the polar freezer. Which, being the opposite to the Panthera Burner, grants, grants Zero One the ability to produce ice. Now, his finisher in this form is the Freezing Impact. Zero One places his hand together and produces a stream of coolant that encases the enemy in the block of ice. Then he leaps toward at the enemy and delivers a downward slash with his right arm, splitting the block and the encased target in two. Boy, that was a mouthful. Anyway, his next form is... Breaking Mammoth. This is basically a mech suit. Where did Breaking Mammoth come from? Well, it's actually a piece of Zaya. I should explain. Zaya is actually a big circular-like device that... that actually attaches to this thing. Which is the satellite that keeps Zaya in orbit. Or at least helps it transmit data better. Anyway, it also has a ship mode that goes down to Earth whenever Aruto uses the Breaking Mammoth Progress Key. Which is where... Which is where this form comes from. Anyway, this gives zero... This form grants Zero One a drastic, ki a drastic increase in punching power and moderate kicking power. At the at the cost of a large decrease in agility, I could have told you that. Now this was also designed as a now the now actually Breaking Mammoth was actually based on another mechanoid that we see in the series, which was actually based which was actually designed to rescue people. As a result, this one has a lot of rescue systems. Now, his main weapon are the Mammoth Pressers. 
two shields on his arm that take the form of giant replicas of the Breaking Mammoth Progress Key. These also work as the solar panels? I don't know. But in any way, why did I mention this? Because it's important for the finisher, Breaking Impact. Once again, reading from the wiki here. Zero One launches one of the pre mammoth pressers into the air, followed by projecting a large energy construct of itself. He then leaps into the air, lands on the mammoth pressure, presser, before using it to crush the enemy beneath him. Usually the enemies are giant rubits. So, yeah. Anyway, next we get into his super form. This being Sh Shinehopper, which... Which, like, like you guessed it, uses the Shining Hopper Progress Key. Well, that, sorry, went too far there. How, now this, now being a super form, this increase, this is an increase to all of his regular stats that he would be used in riding, oh, no, wait. Actually, his jump height and kicking power ha have it increased this that much. Ooh. But his max running speed is nearly doubled and has twice the punching power. Now, this form actually has a very cool ability. It actually has the power to, to simulate a variety of combat powers and go for the best possible one and the last possible second. So, yeah. What the heck was that? Eh. Unfortunately, this this form was incomplete as for, because it couldn't keep up with Arto's Arto's growing combat potential. Yeah, the infra yeah the combat data that was inefficient mean that rising. Meaning that it was only 1.8 more times powerful than Rising Hopper. Meaning, Shining Hopper hadn't reached its full potential yet. However, to fix this, combat data was added for from Zero One's four auxiliary progress keys, not including Flying Falcon, of course. This being Biting Shark, Flaming Tiger, Freezing Bear, and Pressing Mammoth. I mean, Breaking Mammoth, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Dang it, now I know what that is, it's my emails. Anyway, Izu originally planned to sacrifice herself to help bring the lats to the day online. However, her older brother, i.e. an older mo model, named Wazu, used his memory instead. Which, which brought, which brought rising, which brought shiny hopper's true potential out, allow, which, which, not, which really is, is meant to be five times po more powerful than rising hopper. That's pretty awesome. Now, original. Now, there was also another. S now. Ori now, originally being Arto Arto's most powerful form, currently, at the time, there was also another side effect that couldn't be solved by in by putting combat data. Using Chain Hopper demands an, a significant amount of Arto's str strength, meaning meaning the more Arto used this form in battle. The more, the more of, the more energy it drained from him. Also, this form worsened by being. Also, if, also Arto couldn't when you after using the form multiple times. Avenge would force Arto out of his transformation. Which is really bad when you're in the middle of combat. Oops. But anyway, let's... But before we get into the finishers, 
Let's look into the weapon Aruto got. The Authorized Buster. The Authorized Buster could be used by Aruto in, as Shining Hopper or Comrade Vulcan in super form. Again, get into him next time. Anyway, Aruto gains two. Anyway, this one has a... Has a gun, which works like a cannon. And an axe, which, well, works like an axe. Anyway, by... Now, now these forms actually have two different finishers. Blah, sorry. If I am ring. I'm sorry, I'm just reading this. Just trying to figure... Uh-oh. Sorry, guys. Anyway, I think I figured out how this works. Sorry, that took a while. A little... So, in Axe Mode, Zero One has the Burst Bomber. This, in this involves putting a progress key into the slot, into a slot while it's in axe mode. And similar to the R-Type Caliber, the finisher works a bit differently for each progress key. By inputting Rising Hopper, Zero One and a slash of yellow energy capable of striking multiple enemies. Next, for Breaking Mammoth, Zero One creates a pair of of silver mechanical mammoth-like constructs that charge at the enemy before delivering another sl slash that creates a silver construct of mammoth touch which rushes at the target. Now, why is it called the Authorized Buster if it works just like an Artec weapon? Well, similar to, well, you see that little red circle covered by that line? Similar to the Zero One driver, what? Well, sorry, actually, yeah. Similar to the Zero, similar to the Zero One driver. If either Zero One or Vulcan is wielding this, wielding wielding the weapon, by scanning one of their progress keys and then in, and then inserting it, and then inserting it, inserting it into the slot, the. They can create one a more powerful finishing move, similar to the caliber, similar to the Artec dynamic. This one is known as the Progrise Rise Buster Bomber. Ooh, that's fun to say. Progrise Rise Buster Bomber. I like it. But anyway, by anyway, by using the binding shark progress key. Zero One dashes around the enemy before jumping into the air. Once in the air, he creates two rows of blue energy shark fins that cut the enemy between them, then performs an attack with a second set of energy fins. Now, by using it in gun mode, they can use the Progrise Duster. Again, works the, sa Again, works the same way. Now, by inputting the Punching Kong Pro... Now, again, it works by simply just inserting the progress key in into it. By inputting... By inserting Freezing Bear, Zero One fires a blue energy construct of a pull... A pull of a polar bear that freezes the enemy. And unfortunately... And its powered-up form, if I'm reading this correct, is the bus.
Buster Dust is the Progrise Buster Dust. Progrise Buster Dust. It's not as fun to say as Progrise Buster Bomber, but it still works. Anyway, let's go into Vulcan's finisher by putting... Now, this one has two variations. Vulcan can either fire fire an orange energy construct of one of, of one of the gauntlets for his Punching Kong form, which uses the Punching Kong Progrise key, obviously based on a gorilla, or Vulcan can fire an orange energy construct at the enemy, and then fires his second one in, into the first one, combining them for more power. Ooh, that's a mouthful. Now, before... Now that we got that out of the way, let's go into Zero One's finish finishers for a Shiny Hopper. First is Shiny Impact, where Zero One d delivers a pair of high speed kicks. That is sad. Now, remember the scanning thing? Well, by scanning a certain amount of progress, remember the scanning thing for the Zero One driver I mentioned? Well, by scanning them, by scanning a certain number of progress keys, Zero One can perform the Shining Mega Impact. Zero One delivers a series of high-speed kicks that, prepare the, that propel the enemy into the air, before landing more, before jumping after it and landing more kicks, destroying the enemy. Whew. Now, before we get into the next form, we need to go over. We need to go over this thing. This is the Assault Grip. Now, this was originally found on Vulcan's upgraded progress key, the Assault Will Progress key. And instead of, and going in a little, going ahead of myself here, instead of pressing the button on top of his progress key, he would press the button on top of, well, on the Assault Grip. We later learned out, we later learned at the end of the MetsuboJinrai.net arc, yes, say it again. That zero one can actually remove the assault grip and place it on the shining, and place it on the shining, place it on the shining hopper progress key, allowing him to access. I guess you can consider this an alternate super form. You know what? Let's call this a mega form. That just feels right. Anyway, this is shining assault. Hopper, which combines the power of Shine Hopper with Vulcan's Assault Wolf form. Now, originally, Zero One couldn't use this form at randomly because it disabled Vulcan's ability to use Shine, to use Assault Wolf. However, after copying the data, data both sh both with again Shine Hopper's forms really severe Aruto, and again going for Vulcan here. Pro Assault Wolf was very bad for his health, causing him to bleed out sometimes. After after combining the Assault Grip data with Shining Pro, after creating two new Assault Grips that that combined the original Assault Assault Grips data with the data from with the data from that was used to upgrade that was able to fully complete Shining Hopper. Both are both Arto. I think this is what happened, but I can't be sure. Both Arto and Vulcan were able to use, were able to use Shine Hop, which were able to use Shine Hopper, Assault Wolf, and Shine Assault Hopper, with, with no problems. Well, health problems anyway. Meaning they could use them as much as they wanted. However, there was another downside. In this form, this actually links since, well, rising. Shiny Hopper actually represents Zaya, while sh while Assault Wolf represents the Ark, and combined they actually perform a risk to Aruto. They actually unintentionally leak him to the Ark, not fully like he does with Zaya, but somewhat, and it can influence Aruto's emotions. More specifically, the more if Arto is angry, the art can amplify that emotion, resulting in him going wild. Not that he's he's still in control of his own body. Sort of. But anyway, in Shine Assault Hopper mode, Arto is equipped equipped with the Shine with the Shine system. 
which exponentially increases his offenses and defenses ability and allow him to control shi the shining crystals, which are crystals he can which are crystals he can produce and launch his weapons. His finisher in this one is the Shining Storm Impact. Zero One leaps and performs a powerful rider kick charged with yellow and yellow and blue energy, penetrating through the target at high speed. His next form is the Metal Cluster Hopper. Ignore that again. Metal Cluster Hopper. Now this form uses the Metal Cluster Progrise Key. And once again, for unique Pro Strike Keys for upgraded forms, this one actually works a bit differently. It's extremely longer, so Aruto has to flip the end on, on the circular part of the hidden Zero One driver. As a result, Z Shining Assault Hot, as a result, Aruto can't use that scanning function that I mentioned earlier with, that I mentioned earlier. Now, initially, this put Aruto in deep connection with the Ark. As a result, the Ark took control of his body. Now, I'm going to go over the second to last Heisei Comrider series, Comrider Build, where a similar situation took place. Comrider Build, to access his super form, more or less, his mega form, more or less, used the, used the, use the hazard trigger. But the difference here is that before going berserk, Bill, Bill's wielder, named Sento, was able to stay in control for a short amount of time. And I mean short. Best guess, probably like three to five minutes. Well, in this case, since Arto connected to an malevolent program, he is not in control of his body. Now, I bet you're wondering, oh, why does he just use another progress key? Well, after using the, after, after one of the, his enemy, after an evil rider that was introduced in the arc after this, inserted the progress key into it, there is sort of a problem. Arto could not, uh, could not authorize any of his other progress keys. Meaning, if he wanted to transform, he was forced to use the Metal Cluster Hopper Key. But luckily, with the help of all the... With the help of the friends he made... With the help of the human gear friends he made, they were able to help create a, a device that returned Arto's control of his own body and disconnected him from the Ark. This is the Progrise Hopper Blade. Which, which, even if Aruto isn't using it, using it and still in Metal Cluster Hopper form, Aruto can act... Aruto can act... Aruto can still stay in control of his body. Now, by... Now by scan Now by scan now being known as a progress blade, Arto can actually scan it on the zero one driver. Apparently it bypasses the metal thing the metal thing that covers up that scanning scan that covers up that scanning circle. And depending on how many and depending on how many times he pulls the trigger in its single mode, he can perform the pro rising slash. That is a nice name pun. And once again, read from the wiki here. Now this form has three variations. The first is Zero One forms a jagged blade of cluster cells covered in blue electric energy then, and launches it towards the enemy. <coughs> Two, Zero One delivers a horizontal, horizontal slash to the enemy at close range, creating a jagged construct of, of cluster cells. Or version three, Zero One swings the Progrise Hopper Blade, generating a swarm of cluster cells. If you're wondering what I mean by cluster cells, um, they're basically, because this is called Metal Cluster Hopper, basically it's tiny little metal grasshoppers that, for that form the 
well, the form of, for Metal Cluster Hopper. And these blades can, and the pro rise, and the pro, sorry, and the pro rise hopper blade can produce other versions of it. Anyway, back to it. That destroys the enemy's weapon. He then moves towards the enemy and, char and charges the pro rise hopper blade with blue energy before delivering a slash at coast range, train in a jagged construct of cluster cells. Anyway, and Arto can actually com combine this with the Arta Caliber, go transforming it into Nigatari mode. For those who don't know, a Nigatari is a dual what is a blade what is a blade staff hybrid. For those of you who never heard of a Nigatari. The closest comparison I can make is like a lance. Again, that's again that I can make. That's probably not the same thing. Man, this video is getting long. Anyway, by scanning it again, now this one has several finishers, and this video is getting long, so I'm not going to go into that. He can perform the final strash, and yeah, let's move on. No, he does get a new form at the end of the series, but I don't. But since this is going long, I'm just gonna go into his next form. This is Hell Rising Hopper. Yeah, I said Hell Rising. Now, now Arto. Now, yes, this does look like a Red Demon version of Shiny Assault Hopper, which you would be correct. In any case, this is Zero One's movie exclusive form, and he, which is accessed by using the Hell, Hell Rise Pro Rise Key. Blah. Now, I'm skipping a few forms because, like I mentioned, these were never seen in the show. Because there were a lot of Pro Rise Keys. Some did not even get used. Anyway, this is Common Rider's... Wait, let me make sure. This is Comrider 001, which is Arto's movie form because, because continuing that trend from Heisei Comrider, are the crossover movie with the is with his writer predecessor. This was used when when Art when another when when one of the main when a faction of one of the main bad guys from the from Z all create another writer. I'll go into the another rider monsters another time. But anyway, let's get into his final form. Now this one works a bit differently, more or less. You see, before the final form came, the Ark who had manifested himself as a driver and could take over any human gear's body, stole the Zero One driver. However, by having Izu get in touch with her own emotions, Arto was able to create a new driver. A new driver. That being the Zero Two. The Hidden Zero Two driver. Now, this is it in its closed mode, and this is it in its open mode. Now, yes, the base, the base of the Zero Two driver is basically the same. And I forgot to go over Metal Cluster Hopper's finishers. Uh, excuse me, so... Again, let's stop real quick. God, I feel dirty. Alright. Keep going, keep going, keep going. I think I passed it. Oh, here we go. His fan... Wait, let me make sure. No. Okay. Now, his finisher in this form is the Metal Rising Impact, which has two variations. One, the first, is Zero One creates copies of himself formed by cluster cells and... And commands them to perform a rider kick at every enemy in sight. The cluster is the second version is the cluster cells instead form a cone class structure. I think I'm pronouncing that wrong again. In front of the enemy, through which zero one performs a rider kick. Anyway, back to common rider zero two. Anyway, this is used in conjunction with the Zero Two Progress Key. 
Now, Zero Two pre pre surpasses the ARC writers, the stats of the comrade form of the ARC, which is known as ARC Zero. I'll get into him when we actually do. In all areas, by tremendous agree, by tremendous agree, degrees. It's also allowed now. Arc Zero actually had similar to Shiny Assault, Shiny Hopper, and best guess Shiny Assault Hopper, had the ability to well predict where where the most like most likely an enemy would hit. But because of Zero Two, Comrade Zero Two's greater strength, he was able to. He was able to perform multiple attacks at once, preventing slowing. While the arc still did get in some hits, it did. The arc wasn't able to calculate everything. Its finisher, his finisher, instead of being being known as the called the Zero Two Impact, is known as the Zero Two Big Bang. Zero Two performed a series of high speed kicks covered in red and yellow energy. The final kick will project a giant zero to the instant it comes to contact the target. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the for Aruto Hidden, aka Kamen Rider Zero One and Zero Two. I like him. He's okay. He doesn't remind me of me per se, but he does remind me of a guy. But I do like his character. He's a very different writer. Writer, which writer? What do I mean by that? Well, it's kind of hard to put into words. I mean, it's, I just like the guy. He's a very likable character. Character, always willing to help people, never gives up, and no matter what. And I do like his catchphrase, which is, "There's only one person that can stop you, and it's me." Anyway. Anyway, next time join me when we look over the sec when we look over the next writer, maybe two. Join me when we'll look at Comrade Vulcan and maybe the first female writer of the Wayward Era. Come right writer Valkyrie. I know I said I wouldn't say what I was what I was going to well review next, but hey, I am planning to do these in order. But what do you guys think? Want me to talk about want me Talk more about Common Rider? Let me know in the comments down below. Hit that like button and please subscribe to my channel. I don't update often, but when I do, hit that bell icon, you'll get all lace updates. Well, that's all for now. This is Jack Killer saying, There's only one person that can stop you. And it's me! And see ya!